Hi guys, it's Rob Marenghi here. I hope you're doing very well. You might have to turn this up a bit because my old-school camera is not very good. So, today, today's video is called Transformational Vocabulary and how it can help with anxiety and depression. If someone comes up to you and says, I'm absolutely devastated, there's no hope, I'm in the bottom of a black hole and I'm being eaten alive by Wuhan bats, um, with hypothetical creatures, that will be very different than if someone comes up to you and says, I am slightly peeved, I'm slightly miffed, I'm a bit ticked off, I'm, I'm a, ever so perturbed. Um, the second set of phrases is describing the same event or feeling as the same set of as the first set of phrases. But as you probably noticed, the connotations are a lot less heavy and intense, so that it's, it implies a kind of humour and a, a brevity and a kind of lightness to the situation. Whereas the first one, devastation, etc., implies a sort of an unending uh, tunnel of sorrow. Um, you might want to play with this in your own life a bit. Next time you catch yourself indulging in negative thought patterns, and I don't know about you, but living in the UK with winter coming and dictator Johnson ever threatening lockdowns and masks and schools and the rest of it, it's quite easy to catastrophize and uh, depress yourself by using the same, using heavily ch charged language without even realising it, you know, but with the newspapers like, fanning everyone's fear and hysteria and psychosis as well for some reason. Be very vigilant and careful to what language you're using and what metaphors you're using um, to describe your life. What questions you're asking yourself. You know, if you wake up and you think, oh, why is this happening to me? Why is everything so terrible? And we all, you know, we're human, we all indulge in such things from time to time. Um, it's a bad question and, and, and bad questions conjure up bad answers, you know. A better question might be, what are things I'm happy about now? Or if that's too much of a struggle, what could I be happy about now if I, if I really tried? Or what am I excited about now? What, what am I committed to now? Who do I love now? Who loves me? What am I passionate about now? If you can force yourself to ask to reflect on those for a few seconds, you will... After a while, if it becomes a habit, you can even write them down, put them on the wall or something. Start thinking that way instead of in a disempowering way with, a, with questions, you know? It can be very, very helpful. Also, a metaphor. If you, if you say something like, oh, I'm drowning in the ocean of life, or, you know, I'm burning on the surface of the sun of life, as opposed to, I'm mildly tested on my journey, or... Um, oh look, a drop of water jumped in the boat, or something like that. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you get my gist now, guys. Look out for it in yourself, look out for it in other people. Point it out um, to other people if you see them doing it. Try and be polite as you do it. Look for it in newspaper headlines, news headlines, any kind of article. What is the angle here? Um, what emotion are they trying to get out of you? And then you might think, why? Are they, if, it, if it's fear, it might be because it's a very strong, ancient emotion, maybe our most ancient and powerful of all emotions. And if they can tap into that, they can get people kind of addicted to fear and um, hook them to the sensation of being afraid, you know? Uh, seems to be a lot of that. Or outraged. We all know from that film, The Social Network, our social media algorithms put things in front of you that will outrage you to get you typing and arguing with people and keep your eyes on the platform because they don't care in what way they do that, do they? Okay guys, a few tips there on transformational vocabulary. I think if you really practice this and use words like recharged instead of exhausted or tingly instead of anxious, again, you won't succeed all the time and you'll sometimes forget, but this it will take a bit of the heaviness out of the feelings. And if you practice it, it can, it can do that quite a lot, I promise you. So just, you might feel silly calling yourself miffed or peeved or whatever, but if you find yourself smiling slightly at the thought of it, then that's a sign you should do it. Okay, guys. Peace. Check out the rest of the channel. Subscribe. Have a good day. Bye-bye.